Right, I've hit the go live button. It's telling me that we're going live. And it also tells me that I am now live. Now there is a bit of a lag uh, between what I'm seeing over there and what you're seeing live over there. So howdy, I'm Matt, welcome aboard. In this live episode, we are gonna be looking at the new goblin from Hobby King. Thankfully, it has been arrived. Now before we go any further, I want to move out of the way because I'd like to discuss the original rare bear, which is just there. The huge mental success rare bear. And also some potential options for those speed freaks out there as well. That includes the EF Extra and of course the V900. So we will be going slightly off topic this evening. However, it's all within a certain family. And also I've got to be brutally honest, this thing get flies like a s angry little wasp. If only the weather was better here in the UK over the next two days, I'd take it out. But it's not. It's going to be terrible. So it's going to realistically, it's going to be Monday at best, more likely Tuesday we get it out for its maiden. Now, before we go any further, I just feel it really important to stress this model was brought out of my own money for my own abuses. I am aware that it's a fast model. I also need to make you aware I don't give two shits if I smash it in the ground because I'll probably just laugh my head off if I'm perfectly honest. Also, I do know about the aileron movement uh, and also the clevises as well, so we'll take a look at those too. Uh, with that said, I'm gonna switch the cameras over. We're gonna have a top-down view. By the way, if you've got any questions or comments as we go along, just put them in the live chat on the right-hand side of your screen. <laughs> uh, and I'll do my best to keep an eye on your comments as well. Now, just be fully aware, this is live. All fuck screw-ups will be included as they go along. Uh, and I may miss one of your questions as you go along. So please don't take it personally if I miss your question. I'll do my best to answer them in the comment section afterwards. So with that said, let's switch cameras, which I think I need to press. Oh, look at that. Somebody might have been prepared for this. <laughs> and uh, we will take a look. Now, <laughs> saying that, I've lost the knife. That's always a good start, so we'll have to use a screwdriver instead. Uh, so what do we know? It's yellow, which is the one which I've gone for. Uh, they have not offered a red option. And also, I feel it's really important that we discuss the elephant in the room. And it's the only one thing which I can pick up, and I'm also sure it's the only one thing which you can pick up in it as well. Why in the hell did they... Why would you name it a goblin? Why would you name it a goblin when... Underneath my desk, there's already a model called a Strix Goblin, and this isn't like it's an old model. It, this has been a relatively new, if that makes sense. So, I, I just, I've got to say, I, I just don't get it. Why, why would you do that? I just, I that bit confuses the heck out of me. Why would you name it a Goblin when? Nice double boxing, by the way, lads. I can't complain about that. Um, that's the only negative which I can come up with. Is that <laughs> why on earth would you call it a goblin when in reality you know full well that the Strix Goblin's been out for a very long time? Just call it an angry wasp and do with it. Uh, be done with it. Uh, so we'll have a quick look at the specifications. 820 millimeters, so it's going to be bat poop crazy. It length 615, 7 by 6 2 bay prop, 45 amp ESC, 3 9 gram servos, and the really cool bit is that it's got a 3536 1400 kV motor. Now, those of you which don't know about 35, what 3536 means, it basically means it's mahusive. Uh, and it's wholly disproportional uh, for this model. <laughs> so I like it already because they really have given it <laughs> some ability. And apologies, that's going to be really loud on the microphone. Uh, I just realised how much noise that was making. It, it is going to be an absolute little angry wasp. I also need to, in fact, this is actually quite a serious one. Let's uh, flick the screens back. Right, also, let's be perfectly honest, this is not a first time model for, for, for any of you out there. So if you're looking to get into RC, then you do not want to buy this model. For goodness sake, don't waste your model, money on it. 
um, get yourself a, a Bixler or an AXN Cloud Surfer or a Sky Surfer, something like that, and learn with a model like that. This model, because it's so ridiculously fast, if you haven't got the stick skills or the experience on the sticks, you're just going to lose it. And I don't want that for you, so let's just get that out of the way to begin with. Uh, it will be mental fast. And I've seen a couple of people flying these, and they've been absolute pussies. It's meant to go fast. And I can uh, actually, uh, going slightly off topic, my plan for the maiden day is to chuck the EF Extra in the sky and spank that around. Then it's going to get the V900 because I'm slowly increasing the speeds. The EF Extra is about a ton in the sky. The V900 on 4S, that whistles where it goes so fast in a dive. That's easily over a ton. So when it comes to this much more smaller, nimble model, then my fingers are going to be dialed in. This isn't the type of model which you just turn up at the flight line, open up the bag, and then just lob and rip the sky a new one. That's not how it works. <laughs> this kind of model is the second or third flight of the day. So when I go out for a maiden, I'm not going to be a complete tool. I'm going to spank the EF Extra around, V900, really get those thumbs dialed in, and then chuck that one in the sky. So I felt that was kind of important. This really is not a first time as model. It is somebody who's got some stick experience and is looking for some fun because, come on, it, what was it, 80 quid? 80, yeah, it was 80 quid plus shipping. So we'll say 90 quid all in. That's really low. Uh, give or take a bit. So, yeah, we'll see. This is good. <laughs> Watch that. I don't know if you can see that on that little screen, right? That's how much weight is in that nose. That's ridiculous. <laughs> that is wholly inappropriate for the size of this model, and I really like it. <laughs> and um, yeah, the molding is really good. Okay, they've gone for an Aero Star 45, 45 um, ESC, which is fantastic to see underneath there. Uh, that is about right for about a 40, 1400 kV motor, so no big surprise there. I do like the uh, decals which they've done in it, and I'm, I'm here chatting away and I'll get them up on the screen as soon as we get them out of the box and we'll get this half put together. Uh, mine have turned up with the ball links on them. Uh, there's a lot of comments going around that the ball links, and big thank you to Herman who was on here earlier, or probably still on here now, uh, is that the ball links were a bit of an... They were fun, keeping this family friendly, fun to replace uh, with the included clevises we'll get to that topic in just a moment so let's go and get this thing built and take a closer look at it well i'll glue it up properly later i do wonder and i won't make that decision right now uh, but i do wonder whether i'm going to laminate the wings or not uh, they do look pretty tough although i cannot see a spar in them uh, and by the way there's me flexing them and you've got to admit those of you which can Right, that camera, I'm looking over there on the desktop, that camera is not doing this yellow justice. Uh, it is an absolute beautiful, ripe melon colour. It is really, really nice, very well painted. Uh, I like the fact that we have top mounted servos as well. This is a model which is going to go so ridiculously fast. You do not need any servos which are crapping out underneath uh, speed uh, in short. Uh, so, can I quickly just stick this together so that we can see, no, I'm not going to spend more than five seconds doing that. I tell you what, while I'm, I'm just putting this together a moment, uh, Limitless Sky, absolutely, I've just seen your comment on there. Uh, Matt, <laughs> stick the Hobby RC discount code the other way up. Was that the wrong way round? Let me just put that round the right way for you. This is completely intentionally on purpose, we're not sponsored by Hobby RC. Uh, but I did order some, I've ordered quite a lot of them lately, and I thought I'd stick that on my desk, because uh, what goes around comes around and all that. Um, so I'm a quick, look, just didn't catch someone else's work, why doesn't that surprise me? Uh, just bank and yank, so Harry Yagus, uh, what he means by that, this model being bank and yank, is that it has no rudder. Uh, the, none of, well actually the big rare bear does, we'll take a, we'll take a look at that in a moment. Uh, and what on earth is going on? Ah, right, that makes sense. We'll pick that up. It's middle. Oh! Actually, before we stick the wings on, let's get to the elephant in the room. One of the biggest things which I wanted to know, and I'm sure many of you also wanted to know, was how big that battery bay is. And the answer is 
bigger than what I actually personally expected. I don't know how well you can see that on the camera, uh, but that battery bay is a lot, lot bigger than what I expected. Although they have wasted about an inch and a half up in that nose with a plastic shell behind the back of the motor. That really is not coming out very well on the camera. I do apologize, but there is a plastic rectangle which they've got up behind the motor and that that would have been so much better spent for battery space because that has really limited you on what size batteries you can put in there. Now, let's just go with the biggest battery which I've picked up, which is, and again, I do not know, I just wanna stress this from the very beginning, I do not know if this is gonna hit CG or not, as the case may be. Uh, so we'll try it, I've got a Zippy 2225C uh, cell, uh, it's the, yeah, is that, hang on. No, the big one I got is 60C, so we'll stick that one in there. So yeah, that will fit in there. That's for sure, so that's, well, that's the biggest battery which I've picked out to, use, no, second biggest battery which I've picked out to go in this model. So yeah, you will fit a 2200 4S in there, including the higher C1 uh, from Zippy. Those have been really, really good. Uh, you can see how much of abuse I've given mine. That's a lower 25C1, uh, and they're just starting to puff, but I have really given them really not very pleasant flights. Uh, I've got a Infinity 1500 race one, which is, Race spec, that's a higher C1. Can't see the rating on there, but it was something ridiculous. That also fits in there as well. I'm actually happy about that. That gives me a really good uh, wide range uh, of options. Also, the one thing which I will pick, well, I'm not gonna pick on it. What, the, I am gonna mention it, but I'm actually, hopefully I'm wrong, is that what normally happens with a model like this, and it would make more sense if I stuck the wing on, uh, is that sometimes they'll scale it off uh, a real life aircraft and as we, we have seen numerous times before with real life aircraft we'll pick a hurricane or a spitfire for example is while you are statically correct and maybe period correct that it makes it look nice and I'll tell you what I'm going to do I'm just going to stick a couple of pins in the bottom so that I don't have to worry about the bottom falling out every time I pick it up and I will go back and obviously glue this in properly later uh, is that what they can do with period correct models is not extend the nose on a model, which then means, because in real life, it would add a massive great big Merlin engine or something on there, uh, and hitting CG for the actual real life aircraft would have been absolute child's play because it's so blooming, there's so much weight in the nose. Whereas that normally what we would like to see as RC pilots is maybe an extra inch or two inches in the nose. So that gives us a much, wider range of batteries which we can use with our models so uh, putting this kit together is going to be absolute child's play all you need is hot glue dare i say it i'm in fact i've got to be brutally honest i may even just use hot glue on this model because it'll just be so easy and it'll make it a lot quicker uh, and also as we know with the hot glue it won't uh, it does actually last quite well uh, just one very minor nitpicky point which i hope this comes out on the camera I don't know if you can see the difference in yellow paint which they used on the fuselage to the wings. That's two different colors. That's not coming out. That's clear as day here in real life. I don't know how well that's coming out on the camera, but that is definitely two different colors uh, which they used on the model. Uh, I, the point I was trying to get to earlier is that I probably will be laminating the wings. The reason being is that I think this front leading edge will take an absolute beating, uh, especially in the fields where I fly. Uh, and I, I don't have a like club landing strip per se, uh, which is all nice and pretty and everything. And you'll stick, in, you'll see me sticking pins in here. That's purely just to hold the parts on so they don't fall apart uh, in front of us. And I will go back and glue them. Uh, getting the oh look, that's a two-part elevator. So unlike, so let me just make this point on it. So what we've got, if I turn this upside down, you'll see that there's two rods, push rods coming out. To the elevator so that means that both of these elevator surfaces are independently controlled well but they've got separate on there and they elected not to put a hole in the tail hold that onto your mind for a moment because and this is why i wanted to be and this is why i feel really lucky to be able to share this with you uh, is that uh, this is the rare bear fun fighter or fun fighter rare bear which some of you may already know if you've been following along, I have been and converted it to iNav in there. So we do have a flight controller, FPV, and a tiny little FPV camera up 
on its nose. Now this is the what I class as the original Rare Bear, and you'll notice this is extremely similar. One, uh, and it is very similar in a couple of ways. The first one, except for the tail, you'll notice is here on the Rare Bear that the elevator is a single surface and it moves up inside with the uh, rudder, it moves up inside the vertical stabilizer at the back. The other thing to know, and it's a little bit strange, this is really weird, and I know Andrew Horseman, who is far more experienced pilot than what I am, uh, and he noted this, and I, I totally get it, what he's saying, is that if you look at the front, can I put this up like that, there you go. So look at the size of the propeller to the size of the model, and you would not have thought how fast this little thing goes. It goes like a scolded cat. So if I put that back to one side a moment, and then you go and take a look at this one, it's very similar. You've got this huge, great big uh, fuselage, and you've got this tiny little prop on the end with a massive, great big prop nut. And you'd think that with all that energy being wasted, actually, it still goes like a bat out of hell. It's quite peculiar, because there are, there are other models which I've specifically owned in the Fun Fighter series, uh, and it, they have just been absolutely mental. So I wanted to pick that one up as well. Uh, and, that, and again, the, the other thing to, for, for those of you which have owned this model, or literally just got me and received it today, or have already been and pre-ordered it, um, go really, really careful of the servo movements on your surfaces. And the reason why you need to be really extra careful is because this is a fast flying model uh, as such. And also the ailerons are out on the wingtips. Now what that means is that you only need a tiny little bit of movement out here on the wingtip for a massive amount of movement in the sky. And that also goes for the elevator as well. If you've got anything which is going over 100 miles an hour, you, the, the amount of movement which you need in your surfaces is absolutely tiny because it just covers the ground. There's so much air bashing over those surfaces uh, is that uh, a tiny little movement here has a massive impact. So uh, I will be knocking down the, because we're on the second hole down on the uh, servo and I'll probably go down further than that and obviously I'll make sure I try and get up on the top hole on the surfaces uh, on the control horns. And I will be chucking probably, I think because it, in the beginning it will be such an unknown, uh, I will be sticking in probably about 90% expo, if I'm honest. I, I am really harsh on the sticks. Uh, and because it's such an unknown, I will, it's one of those strange ones, which is that it's better to have too much expo than not enough in an unknown setup model, which, some, which can go ballistic. Uh, and that does mean that you can... If you're really enjoying it on that maiden flight, you can really open up those taps, really enjoy the speed of it, uh, and not have an absolute mental, uncontrollable model in the sky. So go for mechanical disadvantage on there. So get the control horns down on the servo on the servo horns. Uh, sorry, get the push rods down on the servo horns and get them up to the top on the uh, control horns. And again, you, according to the manual, you, you need to include the have a quick look. Uh, one nice thing would have been included, which is not included, is a spare propeller. We'll get to spare propellers and why they are important later. But yeah, do change also take the time to swap these over to these clevises instead. Um, there's an interesting discussion in the RC Rebels Facebook group about why those are potentially better. Um, but yeah, so do do that as well. Now I'm just going to pause for a moment. Uh, to again to look at your comments, Breve RC says stick the Zod co-pilot in it. I don't own a co-pilot uh, for it. Um, Christopher says it's like mustard and banana. Uh, it is. I, I'm, I I like the colour of it. It lo really looks like a scalded wasp. The only negative which I can say about the uh, decals is the name which they stuck on it. It just makes absolutely no sense at all. Let's have a quick look. He's got plans too. Uh, on there. And again, I'm just quickly going through your comments as well. Uh, Roy, Royal Flight says, long range FPV. I tell you what, because it goes so fast, if you've ever flown a fast FPV airplane, and I mean a seriously fast, like 60 to 100 plus miles an hour, uh, you will be absolutely shocked how far you can get in literally no time at all. You'll be absolutely amazed. Uh, is this a candidate to be FPV'd? Well, frankly, every single model which can be FPV'd 
should be FPV'd, so we may look at that in the in the near future. But it doesn't matter what you do with the camera, even if you get it right up here in the nose, you're going to end up with a lot of prop wash going on in there. The most logical place is up here on the top of the uh, canopy. Again, that makes sense to uh, have easy access to it and maybe get the video transmitter up in the top of there as well. That would be my first choice uh, for it. Excuse me. But um, yeah, it would be pretty mad to say the least. And also, let's be honest here, uh, one of the reasons for, if I move back up, there we go, one of the reasons for maybe putting Copilot in it, or iNav, or a similar system, uh, would be that creature comfort, that little safety net, uh, as in that if you were to uh, get disorientated, and I've got to put my hands up, I get disorientated with fast models, it happens, uh, even to experienced pilots, and more, way more experienced pilots than me, that if, if if some, if you're on the flight line and someone's smashing a model around the sky like an absolute berserk tool, um, they're lying to you if they've not got lost orientation more than once during that flight. It happens. I, I can count spins fast or rolls very, very, I can count fast rolls very, very quickly. And even sometimes I lose count as well. And then you just kind of pull the sticks back and see what happens. So... Uh, yeah, it, it, and because it is so small, it is going to get very small in the sky, also equally quickly. So yeah, so we went on a bit of tangent then. Uh, coming back to my point, which I was trying to make, was that the likes of a stabilizer, iNav, co-pilot, or a similar tool, absolutely fantastic. You never get a complaint from me about putting such devices in a model airplane because they do get the little brain switch, return to home, or just stabilize mode. Come on, let's be honest, having a stabilizer in a, any model means that you can fly it in less than ideal uh, conditions. Which brings me to another point, which I'll show up on the big camera, because it'll be more obvious, is that can you see that both of these wings are coming out? Okay, keep that in the back of your mind, because if you have a look at the little Fun Fighter Rare Bear, is that doing exactly the same thing? If you take a look at the big Rare Bear, which I haven't really introduced to you just yet, but just give me an idea, you fly this bad boy on 6S, it's mental on 4S, I've never tried it on 6S, and it was just bonkers on uh, 4S, let alone anything faster, but they, they do smash these around the sky, and you'll see what I mean about the nose being a huge, great big nose, you wouldn't believe that so much of the propeller is blocked, but yet it still goes so fast. Anyway, getting back to my point, you'll see that there is dihedral in those wings and as such that does mean that even if you're off slightly on the sticks if you just let go of the sticks the model will self level itself that is the biggest positive which i can see to and again i'm i i'm super happy i'm, I'm sure you are as well that hobby king or durafly uh, have been used this design because we have been desperately needing this design again you can't get a fun fight a rare bear for love the money and if you can get one the packaging is so bad on it i had two turn up here and one of them was absolutely obliterated at just no chance in the blue monkeys of saving it it was just so bad so to see this designer model come out uh, i i'm personally very happy with like i said the only thing which i'm ever going to pick fault on is the stupid naming of it i think that's ridiculous so i'm not going to loll on that one too much too much further right uh Let's move to, and I'm just checking on my notes here. There is something else which I want to bring up, which is in the order of speed. And I want to give you, and thus I, I can't show you it flying until next week, but I wanted to be able to give you some like options and some comparisons uh, out there. Uh, and for those of you which are looking for a faster model, I wanted to give you an option other than this one, because I don't think this is like the best first fast model which you own, because it's too small and you'll lose it. And it, well, let's not go there for a moment. Let me just put that one to one side. The model which I did want to share with you is the EF Extra. Uh, you know it's an EF Extra because I've only got half a propeller. <laughs> there are two things which you bad which you can say about an EF Extra. One, the propellers snap for an absolute pastime. And two, there's a great big poop scoop underneath there, which I literally pulled a chunk of mud out uh, to get what I took it out of there. Uh, the EF Extra is a far far. I'm not going to say superior, a far nicer model to fly in the sky just because of the size of it. If we just do a quick size comparison, 
uh, for it. You're going to see that in the sky over that. Okay, it, it's only a little bit bigger, but take it from me, something like this is far easier to fly in the sky it, and it is also ridiculously fast. Yes, it's slightly more expensive, but also it is ridiculously fast as well. Uh, and so many people have had the EF Extra. It is a known really good model and there's tons of spares out there for you as well. So if you snap the wings in half for whatever reason or rip the tail off, you can get spare parts for it. So that, that's actually my first suggestion. If those of you which want a dabble in some speed, go for the EF Extra because overall it's better value for money and it's a bigger, no, let me get this right. It's a better value for money because the chances of you stuffing it are, are an awful lot less than that little angry wasp. Okay, so just keep that in the back of your mind. There is one other option, and I, I can look at you, and I, remember, I bought that out of my own money. I also paid 178 quid for the Horizon Hobby V900 when it first came out. Don't get me wrong, it is the fastest model which I own, well, or plug and play model at least, uh, and it is absolutely bat poop crazy. However, it is ridiculously expensive for what it is. And you'll see that I did laminate the wings on this one as well. It is, yeah, it's the fastest plug and play model which I've got. It's really good fun in the sky. It is extremely well behaved, but it's so stupidly overpriced. You're far better off just getting yourself an EF Extra because the EF Extra is, if I can sit that in there, just the model which there's tons of spares available for it and it's a lot cheaper as well, okay? Uh, oh, and Jake, thank you for that. I missed out on that one. You, as part of the kit for the EF Extra, this hood there, and you can see how much I've used it by the paint which is worn off. Uh, in the box, you get a canopy cover, which you can put your FPV camera on there and your video transmitter to it as well. So those of you which are looking for something which is, you're not gonna stuff easily, okay? It's not that much more expensive than that one. And I've got to admit, 86 quid is probably about a good price. I'd, um, that, that price is always wrong, but that kind of fits right with me personally anyway. Uh, and with EF Extra, you do get the option to FPV it really easily. So it won't be a struggle like doing it with that one. You're not carving out foam and stuff. This one, you literally take that off and then put your, can put your own little canopy in there, which you get in part of the kit and off you go. Oh, and unlike the original EFX racer, you can actually put a massive variety of batteries up the nose in this one. The original EFX, uh, EF, EFX racer, I think I need to get my terms right, they fly really well, but the, trying to get a battery in the nose is ridiculous, and that was one of the big considerations when this one came out, which was a bigger battery bay, clip wings, and an FPV pod. So maybe in the future, they might bring out, or somebody, in fact, if you're watching this and you own a Goblin and you're pretty good in, say, Fusion 360, please create us a 3D printable hatch on the top which we can set up for FPV so we can do exactly what we've just been and done there. That would be really cool. So we can print off our own hatch on the top of there uh, and then put our own camera in it. And, it's, and again, 3D printing is kind of the way to go because then it could still be potentially aerodynamic and not just a great big brick in the way. Uh, John says, I will make sure I order lots of spare props. I think that's the one thing which the shocker, which was not in the box, was that we were, there, there wasn't a spare propeller. Just from my personal experience with the EF Extra, they really do like to snap propellers for an absolute pastime. Uh, fingers crossed, uh, we don't, it doesn't do in here. It uh, doesn't do with the Goblin. Now, I wanna, there's one other thing which I want to share with you, and we'll get back to the desk for this. Uh, and it's from what I've seen what other pilots have been doing in the previews and stuff. And it's a slight, how do we explain this? Overlook, perhaps? Uh, and that is, where are we going to put our receiver? There is some space down here in the side of the fuselage. And there is some space on the opposite side. Now, what I did see somebody do was to... Uh, put a little plywood base in there, board in there and glue that in and put their receiver on top. Um, you can't really stick it down the back into the fuselage itself because you've got two push rods which will be continuously moving around in there, so that's not the best idea. So the only one place which you've got is literally in there somehow. Uh, and I think, yeah, you'll fit an X8R receiver in there. 
Um, maybe a D for R2, but yeah, that is going to be a bit of a challenge. And of course, your UI is coming up there in the sensor section, and it would have been, yeah, so they're going to have to get those cables are going to have to go up and over the top. So, yeah, first impressions on the Jurafly Goblin. It's exactly what I hoped for, if I'm frankly honest. I am so personally happy that we have, as pilots, we've got an option over that one. Because those of you which have never seen that little model fly, this tiny little rare, fun fighter rare bear, they are absolutely bonkers in the sky. And if that one is only half of that one, we're gonna be in for an absolute treat. So that's my humble opinions on the uh, Jurafly Goblin. From first impressions on here, it's gonna take what? I'm gonna have to have a bit of a faff doing the ball link, swapping those over. But I will reduce the servos down on here, glue the bits on. Uh, I am. I, I, the more I've looked at it, the more I am going to laminate these wings, uh, just because of the places which where I fly. Uh, it does come with a skid pan on the bottom. Uh, I may even just half laminate the fuselage as well. What I mean by that is that uh, I will laminate the wings as one piece, then this glue the fuselage on, glue the wings on. Uh, and then probably just laminate half the, the, the fuselage itself. With, and that means I don't have to worry about any complexities up here. And I get all the benefits of being laminated, which is keeps the model nice, clean, and looking good, but not having to worry about all the complicated bits around the fuselage. So yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna be doing. Uh, as far as this model having no rudder, I, I'm, yeah, those of you which know a rare bear and when it flies in the sky, you don't really need rudder, let's be, let's be honest. It's so ridiculously fast. Ugh. Whatever, it, it, it's no great loss and um, I, I, I have absolutely zero intention of putting one in there. Right, uh, with that said, let me have a quick look <laughs> at your comments uh, in there. Uh, Jake also says, yes, it does say 69 on the wings. I always laughed at that one. Uh, this kit also does come with some instructions which I probably won't read if I'm honest. But it does come in numbers. The only two numbers we're after are those two. Brilliant. So we'll stick our own numbers on there uh, very shortly somewhere. And it's got some other numbers which I might stick on some other models just to take the P. So uh, yeah, happy days. So a quick look. Oh, Herman. That, ah, so sorry. Those of you which are wondering why, why I'm going Herman, ah, there is a live chat which is going on with this video. Uh, and Herman, and that's on the right hand side of your screen. Remember, if you're using a mobile device, that's probably hiding at the bottom. Uh, underneath this video, you might need to click live chat or live chat replay, as the case may be. Uh, Herman's been put in there, yes, got the goblin to replace my F4U Fun Fighter I lost a few years ago. So, yeah, I've had a collection of Fun Fighters, and they are absolutely brilliant little models. And with that in mind, and again, I have so much fun. I've had so many hours of fun over there with that little fun, uh, little rare bear. I am so glad to see this style of model come out because I know, and you probably know, that they fly really well. And that one flies like an angry little wasp and that's right up my street. So with that said, I'm just gonna have a quickly wander up the screen to up the live chat. If you've got any questions or comments, uh, please just say ask now in the live chat because we are going to be wrapping up uh, in a few uh, moments as well. Uh, Spoof FPV says tail mount it. Yes, you could absolutely put a, absolutely put one of those. Oh, which one was it? It's a Foxeer Razor. I uh, don't know those of you up there which spotted that FPV camera up there on the canopy. That's absolutely tiny. Uh, you could cut that back quite easily in that tail section. I think that would work. Uh, and the quality on that camera is actually pretty good. So that's a Foxy Razor Micro or Nano. Um, yeah, quality was uh, genuinely uh, impressed by that. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's have a quick look. Uh, Frag says, uh, split Elevon setup maybe. So what Frags means by that, and I'll stay, stay here at the desk, uh, is that what you could do, <laughs> and you would just face it, you would be, I, I don't think you need to do it, but if you wanted to do it, you could potentially stick another servo in there and then have each of the elevator surfaces being independently controlled. So you could mix in, so to, I, you could do it, Frags. 
I, I, I just don't think it would be worth the time to do it. I, for the output, because the model flies so fast in the first place, it's gonna. Tr it's got so much airspeed over it. I don't think you need it. I, I just genuinely don't think you need it. Um, good idea. You could put a second servo in there, uh, and you could uh, get those elevator surfaces to move separately, like Elevons. But it, it's going to be such a fast model anyway. It's not needed. Oh, I, uh, and as I alluded to back at the beginning, that's a 35, 36, 1400 kb motor. So by the time you've stuck 4s in it, it's going to be absolutely berserk as well. Uh, Brie RC says I like it. Uh, let me just scroll down on here. But can you fit a 5200 4S in there? I have no idea. Let me grab one of the newer ones. <laughs> Just for poops and giggles. I, do you know what? No. Is that going to fit? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not going to fit in there. I know the wires are in the way. That's not good. That, I don't think we... Somebody will get that to go in there with a bit of... Is that going to fit? Yeah, you'd have to cut foam out-ish specifically down the sides to get that fit in there. I wouldn't be surprised if someone doesn't get a 5204 s in there. Uh, and that's just gonna fly for days because that's a ridiculous amount. So we'll click, Roto Master says, I've got the blue pink one. It looks nice. I must admit it does look really, really nice as well. Uh, someone mentioned they put a stabilizer in there as well. I kind of agree with you. It is definitely a model which would, um, what? Let me just get rid of the spam a second. Uh, hide user on this channel. Cheerios. And he's gone. Thank you. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah. You could put a decent range of batteries in there. Right, so let's have a quick look. Yeah, so just trim some foam out and it'll be fine. And again, just a really hard launch and you'll be away. Now, I tell you what, I'm going to flip the cameras back over to myself. Uh, like so fantastic so the one thing so those of you which have been and bought this one and are looking to go out and fly on the weekend for goodness sake and I cannot stress this enough let me just get this one back on here a moment and I'll show you get onto YouTube and watch a couple of people launching these all right and the reason why I'm saying that is because when they're launching them okay the torque roll in this model is insane every single one is dipping off, okay? So if you've been and bought one of these to today and you're going out to fly today or tomorrow, get yourself on YouTube, go and watch somebody doing a maiden and watch that torque roll. So with that in mind, okay, get someone else to throw it for you. It's not, what's I gonna say? I, I'm never too humble to accept, someone, to, accept to, to allow someone else to chuck the model for me. Okay, and the reason why I'm never too humble to, to accept that is because I, I'm, I always chuck my right hand, which sounds really like I'm, I'm just so used to doing it. So it's not like I'm launching with my left and straight on the sticks. I'm a right hand launcher and I'm right handed as well and I use mode two. So if, if there's somebody there who can launch your model for you, accept it just for the first one or two flights. Okay, just so that you know in your head how that model reacts at certain throttle levels. Because you, I, there was one video I saw some bloke launching it and it went bang and then it went off uh, and he only just caught it and that would have been really embarrassing. Like, I don't want you to lose some lovely little foam just because of some torque roll on the launch. And again, the Rare Bear is absolutely renowned for it. That one is absolutely renowned for the, the torque roll as well. The second you've got some airspeed underneath it, perfectly fine so about half throttle and a really good lob whether it's an underhand or a chuck it's fine just go really careful for that taut roll uh so let's have a cut that there uh frag says are you going to do a review on the razor fpv cam i can do i'll do that as part of the because i've got i know sat in that one now and i'll do that as maybe a part of the voiceover when we go out and fly that one uh once i've got chance to go and fly it uh grandpa ken welcome aboard uh, if you've just been and joined us, don't forget you can hit rewind and go back to the beginning uh, as well. Uh, Rotomastic, yes, uh, yeah, I'll go and get someone to chat that for me. Yeah, I, I, I can't stress that enough. It's not um, like it, it, it just makes sense, you know. You've just spent 80 quid on it, you've just spent some time faffing it with it as well. Take, be humble, take the launch from someone else. I, I, I just want to stress that one there as well. 
Uh, and Road to Master, yeah, I hate launching with the right hand, but that's one there. Uh, and Limit of Sky, yeah, half roll about that. That's what that's what I'm going to do with mine. Uh, but you'll feel it, you know. You'll you'll feel the model want to go, especially with something like that. And then it's just that level in your hand once you've got it right, and and off it goes. And I I know somebody which is launched just flops their wing off into the sky and they either get away with it 99% of the time. So, yeah, very, very curious. Right, let me just check my notes. Have I missed anything? We've spoken about the size. It is a small, angry little model. It is gonna rip the sky a new one. So, goes back to what I said at the very beginning. It's not a first timer's model. It's probably, if, you, if you're after a fast model, for your first proper fast model, for line of sight, smashing it around the sky, get yourselves an EF Extra, whichever, whatever I did with it. Get yourself one of those, okay? Slightly more expensive, we'll wreck the sky on you one and you can FPV it, okay? You're not gonna lose that in the sky as readily as that little angry wasp, okay? So when it comes to size, size matters, especially on, for your first fast model, don't suggest that at all. Get yourself an EF Extra, better value for money all round, okay? Because you're less likely to stick it in the ground. Okay, if you're slightly more experienced and maybe had one or two slightly faster models before, knock your socks off. That one's going to be absolutely bonkers. Uh, wing design, we mentioned, remember, just quickly recapping one of my notes in there. You do have dihedra in the wings. It will self-right right itself. I absolutely love that. I'm glad that they kept that as part of the design. Genuinely impressed. I know that from other models which I've got with the same wing design. Works out really, really well. Uh, and what have I got on there? Yeah, we're a little bit limited on the FB op FPV options. I am slightly disappointed that we don't have an FPV option available out of the box for this model. So I, I wholeheartedly urge those of you which are, are good with Fusion, please create us a little canopy lid which we can use and then adapt uh, for our models because once you've cut into that canopy, which that yellow don't even match that yellow or that yellow. <laughs> can you see that? It's just three different colors. It's just. That's, n that's just about coming out on the camera. Can I get this? Yeah, that's three different yellows. You've got a yellow for the wings, you've got a yellow for the fuselage, and you've got a yellow for that. Now, as much as I can take, make that as a minor complaint, I actually, from working with vehicles, yellow is like the worst color. You, you, you could never color match yellow. It's like the worst color underneath the sun. So, grumbles are mediocre, if I'm honest. Uh, so it would have been nice to see that on there and also ball links which I know about. If your model has been in terms of with ball links, it is advised that you take those out, change them over with the suggested clevises uh, which are in the kit and also when it comes to movement on your transmitter, knock them down, go for a mechanical disadvantage on the servos. What I mean by that is drop the control horn down on the servo horn and up on the top of the control horn. Uh, so you have minimal deflection because this model moves so fast you need very, very, li very little movement. And of course, give yourself far too much expo in the sticks just in case you haven't given yourself enough a mechanical advantage. And the last thing I want for you and the last thing I want for me as well is a model doing the best part of a ton across the sky and not being able to fully control it. So it's not bobbing up and down like a lunatic. You want it to be nice and graceful, okay? Oh, and also, just from a practical point of view, it's okay to take two, three, four runs at a landing as well. Something like that is going to come in quite quickly, yeah, and it is going to—it's probably going to glide quite well. Shockingly, <laughs> for the for the weight, which you, when you when you've got it in your hands, you'll feel it's quite heavy. But even for the weight of it, remember it's a small model, and it will glide for a decent distance. So. Again, I'm thinking about those of you which are going out and flying it this afternoon or over the weekend, because we've got the weekend right in front of us. Take it steady. Don't be afraid to abort those landings. Go for a quick slow pass and see how it reacts. Go for a second pass. Line it up on the third one, but don't panic. You have to go around a fourth or fifth time. Nobody's there gonna take the piss out of you. I would never take the piss out of you to have and go five times around and get a model and down on the ground and keep it in one piece, because let's face it, as much as that we all laugh when we smash up foam, and please, if you smash one of these up over the weekend, take photos, share it with everybody, so we can all have a giggle too. But on a serious point, it's about getting the model back down so we can get another battery and get it in the sky. And if you need to go around a couple of times, that's fine by everybody, all right? 
So that's all my notes covered. Uh, give you a heads up, the maiden for mine will be done on either next Monday or Tuesday. As soon as I've been and done that, I will share that with you as quickly as I can. So uh, if you're new here and you're interested in what my opinion on it is and get it in the sky, and I will get it as much footage as I can. Uh, don't forget to press the red subscribe button underneath this video. And of course, uh, to press the bell icon as well. And the reason why I'm suggesting pressing the bell icon is because Every single day, we're getting anywhere between three to five community updates on YouTube. And that means that the second I've got that out, I will post my opinions uh, once I've got it in the sky uh, out on YouTube so that you can see what I think of it, etc., etc. So uh, with that said, yes, I agree with about the ball links on there. Uh, Flight 9, yes, absolutely. Uh, Bradley's also put it there in the comments as well. Ball links are a ball ache to remove them. Uh, by the time you want to remove them, you make sure you uh, have a quick look. Yeah, so go. Yeah, uh, Bradley's mentioning that the ball, uh, ball links are an absolute nightmare to take off. Uh, so have a quick look. Uh, have you released your files on the mini gimbal? Are you going to release them? So frags, you're talking about the gimbal which is on the binary. Uh, that's actually on Thingiverse by Keith Lanou. Okay. Uh, just look, pan and tilt is actually meant for a run cam hybrid 4K. Works really good. Uh, I must admit, I did actually break mine, but then that binary did end upside down two or three times on the day. Uh, I don't. Again, I am going to go off topic. All right, so that's it for the goblin. It, 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 I, I will smash it around the sky on Monday or Tuesday as soon as the weather gets. As soon as it starts raining, basically, um, I'm not that bothered about wind. We'll just smash it around and see what happens. Um, going off topic completely now from the goblin. Uh, the binary, many of you know, I have been out and flown it. I have had it in the sky. I need to fly it on a calmer day because it was so windy. We had like gusts up to like 30 miles an hour, the amount of turbulence we were flying in. I flew it, but just about. It was so windy, it's, it's un I, and I left that day from the, 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 from the farm thinking, I can't. I, I'm going to put some footage up for its maiden, but you've got to keep in the back of your mind, the weather conditions were horrific. It was not the day to be doing maidens, and I'm not going to hold it against it that during the launches that it ended upside down twice or three times. Uh, and the reason why I'm not going to hold it against the model is because the wind conditions were so bad. It was a, we, we made a mistake and knocked it in a dead spot, and then the second time we just got hit by a great big gust. It just didn't stand a chance, you know? So going off topic for the binary, need to do that on a calmer day. I need to be very objective with that uh, and give it a fair fight uh, because it, <laughs> I can't give it its due. It flew in bloody awful conditions and it did all right. Uh, I will also give you a heads up. I've got some Laura, uh, Laura boards which have been then turned up. So we're going to be, are, are going to be looking at iNav radar uh, very, very shortly. Really simple setup process. I've just been over there on the desk. Just flashed one uh, with the latest version of iNav uh, radar. So seamless. Well done, the developers there. Really, really cool. I'll make a quick video on that one. And of course, we have the INAF Waypoints video coming up very shortly too. And the models which you have not seen is that down there I have a 1.4 meter Eagle, which needs to get out of flow, and a collection of other stuff as well. So I've got about 20 episodes in backlog. I will get those out as soon as I can for you as well. So on that note is that if I have been a missed your question in this live session, I do apologize. As you can imagine, I'm working to my own little set of notes here and there was so much I wanted to get out and discuss uh, about the Goblin. First impressions, double thumbs up. The only thing which we can all go and go like, why did you call it that? I, I, that's the only thing which I can pick up upon. Am I happy to see this style of model being available for us to fly as pilots? very happy to say the least very, genuinely very very happy uh and i'm yeah i'm chuffed that they've been brought that designer model out because the, the, the original rare bear is so much fun and you get to experience that now because you could have these ones you could get hold of them but the packaging was so bad like i said i've been three of them and one of them turned out and the package it was just decimated because it was just like one ply cardboard uh, and just would not stand the distance this Happy days, you've got a bit of a ball weight with the control rod, push rods. That's nothing. If you're buying a model, which you know that does over 100 miles an hour, swapping those bits over, yes, it's a pain, but I think you're going to get over it. I'm going to get over it. So, hey-ho. Right.
on that note, for myself, Matt, thank you very much for taking the time to join me here live. I've, I've left every mistake in as it goes <laughs> along. Uh, if I've missed something later on, I'll update the description. Of course, don't forget to, like I said, I can't stress this enough, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification because I am posting three to five times per day here right on YouTube. Of course, that appears up in your main feed or you can check on the Magnum Luxoft channel and click on the community tab as well. On that note, it feels really good to be back doing some live stuff because there's no editing. I hate editing, I really do. One of the unnecessary, well, one of the necessary evils of doing stuff on YouTube, video editing. So that's why I like the live stuff. Maybe we'll see a little bit more live stuff in the very near future as well. So thank you very much for taking the time to join me here live and I'll catch you again shortly. For myself, Matt, cheerios, happy flying. And if you've got one of those and if you're flying that this weekend, I'm not talking to you. I'm just so jealous. I really am. The weather's shocking here. Right, time for me to go. Catch you again shortly. Happy flying, gents. Cheerios. Cool. Don't I even press the M button. Right. Second time lucky, as they say.